Good afternoon uh, to you all. Uh, it is Sunday, the sixth of December, um, two thousand thirteen. Uh, sorry, sixth of January. So I should say two thousand thirteen. And today we're going to have a look at the culture of U.S. sport and American football within social cultural studies. Quite an important topic. I've highlighted here that it was last exam in June two thousand eleven, but this particularly relates to the culture of the US. In fact, if we look at the concept of American football as representative of the culture of the US, almost a topic in its own right, it's actually been last examined in January 2010, so really quite a long time ago. So while we'll have a look at um, the culture stuff uh, today, and that is quite important, it may well come up, American football looks like a real possibility for your exam. So you really do need to have a good awareness of that uh, in preparation for a potential question on American football in your exam. So let's get started. So to begin with, we would argue that the US sporting culture is based on one primary factor, and it's this one here, that the economy of the US is a capitalist economy, economy so it's based on capitalism. And that really brings about three main outcomes with uh, respect to sport. The first is that we expect that sporting structures are based on what, what we would call a free market. So we have a situation where those um, sports organisations, franchises particularly we refer to them as, they uh, are born into a free market and are there to make money. So sport itself is profit driven, which is actually our third main characteristic, but it drives the structure and the focus of sport is profit driven. That is the first and primary objective of uh, the sporting culture of the US. And because of that, we would state that US sport is founded on business. So it's a, bound, it's a business foundation. So this isn't about uh, legacies of participation for the rest of society or anything like that. This is about market business principles driving sport in able to allow profit to be made. Now this of course brings about some really interesting characteristics of uh, US sport. And the first one, and it's the one really we almost always raise first, is that we end up with a sport which is win at all costs. And why? Because winning makes money. And that of course brings us back to that primary capitalistic focus and the notion of a profit driven industry. If it's win at all costs, we must state, I'm going to put this in green for the Green Bay Packers, which if you know about uh, Vince Lombardi, you know what I mean. Um, but this is based on what we call a Lombardian principle. Now Vince Lombardi has made reference to him was a head coach uh, of the Green Bay Packers about 35 years ago. Very successful. Um, he drove this idea that winning was the only factor that mattered and everything and everybody else was expendable towards that outcome. Very successful coach. Whether he was a nice man or not is, a, is another matter, but certainly that was the principle that drove his uh, philosophy and his regime, which proved very successful and made an awful lot of money for that franchise. We can also see this win at all costs uh, factor in the fact that there are no draws in American sport. You're either a winner or you're a loser. So win at all costs. It's one or the other. Um, and the other factor we uh, really need to um, consider here is that sport is an entertainment in the US. And because it is an entertain, What am I doing? entertainment. It has a very, very strong media influence. And some might even argue too much. We know, for example, in many US sports that it is the media that drives the timing of events, for example, or the nature of entertainment half-time shows and things like the Super Bowls, for example, which really drive the time. It's not really so much about the sporting spectacle itself, but the spectacle in a more general sense. The nature of the games as well also leads out from this entertainment point. They are high octane, often aggressive or even violent activities which are very, very media friendly. They often involve things like breaks and timings within things like timeouts and uh, quarters and half times to allow this notion of entertainment within the sport. But the nature of the games 
is really different to, for example, uh, British sporting activities. And of course, it all sounds very exciting at this point, but we must also recognise that because we have this win at all costs, we also have a notion of deviance. We get a lot of things like violence, even drug use in American sporting uh, culture, and a lot of high-profile uh, evidence and cases. Um, I'm sure you'll know many of them, not least people like Landis, and also people like uh, uh, recently um, Armstrong cyclists. But, um, but we also have a lot of um, evidence that um, particularly steroids was really widespread in American football um, around about 15 years ago. It's a little bit cleaner now, but um, it, was a, it was a pretty endemic factor that um, drugs were used in that particular activity to make sure that people got there, that they won. And finally, we must remember this business aspect. And of course, who owns these businesses and who owns these teams? Well, they're owned by what we would call franchises. And a franchise is a private owner or a, or a group of private owners who own these sporting teams and units. And again, come back to that first point we made, that ownership is all about. And of course, to sort of conclude this aspect, we can describe this whole structure and culture as following the American dream. And so really, I'm sort of putting inside it here. Um, this sort of idea of rags to riches and of course this can be achieved through sport a very commercialised franchise profit driven uh, nature of sport but American Dream will always get you a mark when answering a question on the US so let's have a look at particularly the uh, structure and organisation of American football and particularly with American football we want to consider two aspects firstly that it's a, a particularly kind of a violent or uh, physical activity and why that in America is such a, a popular characteristic and this sort of notion once again of commercialism and, and, and how and why sports football has developed in such a commercial structure. Let's take violence first of all. Well we argue that this very sort of aggressive violent game is bound up in the American frontier spirit. This is the notion of people travelling to what is now the United States with very little in terms of money and resources and establishing a life and later a country um, in that location in great hardship. So this kind of violent uh, physical activity represents that fight for survival. Of course the rules themselves allow for kind of a violent physical cont uh, contest. This is a high impact or contact sport, so it allows for sort of um, large scale aggression and violence. The crowd sort of bays for blood in sort of a gladiatorial um, kind of sensational contest. They're after a spectacle, and the spectacle is people smashing into one another and um, doing extraordinary things with uh, the human body. So. Um, Violence becomes part of that and the crowd kind of bays for that kind of thing. Remember what you said a few moments ago. It's this is the win ethic, the win at all costs. When winning is everything, you will do pretty much whatever it takes to achieve that winning. And violence, aggression will come into that. If you are in a violent setting, such as American football, you may well need to protect yourself. So protection um, such as clothing, helmets, it's like going into battle or into war with the um, outfits that they wear. It's actually quite militaristic, in fact. This kind of, uh, even the language they use, such as territory and um, invading and progressing, all this kind of language is quite militaristic in um, essence. You also have um, certain specialists within the team whose job it is to rough up or be violent and aggressive with the opposition. Uh, and that actually... Um, leads to sort of parts of the game being more violent than the others. We also have this very sort of prominent notion, it comes into our course a lot in different areas, of tradition. The game was traditionally violent and aggressive and therefore it's very difficult to change or overcome that. That's what people expect and what they see the game as. Well, on commercialism, of course, we know this is largely linked to that very first point I made 
and that was all about capitalism, the sport being run, as we said earlier, as a franchise, a money-making, profit-driven industry. So this is all about making money. Because of that, the commercial side brings in things such as sponsors, and they get involved with the sport in their own terms to make money as well. It's very commercial because TV is involved, and many, many American football games every single weekend on Saturdays and Sundays, and even on Mondays in, in the case of some games, they're shown live on TV, and that, of course, brings in uh, sponsors into the regime because there's lots of people watching it. And would also finally argue that the Super Bowl, which, if you don't know, is like the grand final, if you like, of every season's American football um, or National Football League season, um, this is a real massive money-spinning, money-making uh, event with worldwide coverage making huge sums of money for the franchises, the players, the sponsors uh, and the media companies involved. And therefore, American football is a particularly commercial event. So guys, look over this material closely. It really is a possibility for your exam. Personally, I actually hope it comes up because it's really accessible material. Make sure you can describe the uh, culture of U.S. sport, really linking into that notion of a capitalist, free market, business-driven, profit-driven industry, win ethic, American dream, um, franchise-based organization, and that the American football, which of course is perhaps the best example of that, is a violent commercial uh, activity for the reasons that are currently uh, shown on the screen here. Guys, so looking forward to uh, working with you again from Wednesday. If you do have any feedback or any requests you want to make for sessions, then drop me a line. A couple of you have done that already. Very much is appreciated, and I'll try my very best to put something on for you. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.